Welcome to the Heartfire Rising podcast, personal growth in less than five minutes. I'm your host, Danielle Pai, and today I'm really excited to be joined by a mindfulness coach and gerontologist and founder of Sarah Renee Coaching, Sarah Menser. Sarah, thank you so much for being here. Danielle, thank you for having me. So I love talking to you and I always learn so much from you. And today's topic is the highly sensitive person. So can you talk a little bit about what that means, the highly sensitive person? Absolutely. Many people in the world now are understanding themselves and others like them more because of a specific researcher. Her name was, or is, she's still alive, (laughs) Dr. Elaine Aaron. Dr. Aaron discovered what she calls a highly sensitive person. Um, And this is a person she uses an acronym called DOES to describe them. So a highly sensitive person has four main characteristics. They have this depth of processing. They need more time to process information and it may take them longer to make decisions. Uh, The O stands for overstimulation. Highly sensitive people pick up on a lot more than their their non-sensitive counterparts. It causes them to become overstimulated very easily. Uh, The E and does stands for emotional responsiveness or empathy. So they're very empathetic. Um, They have more mirror neurons in their brain, which that could be a whole nother podcast, Mm -hmm. which causes them to be more empathetic towards other people and really feel other people's emotions. And then the S stands for sensitivity to small things, small stimuli. They're more likely to... um, notice things that other people don't notice, be super affected by violence in movies. And on the other side of it, very affected by beauty in movies or in nature. Interesting. And so I can imagine if all this energy is coming at them and they're very empathic, it can create a sense of stress or anxiety if it's too much. Would that be fair to say? Absolutely. And I myself am an HSP. And before I knew that, you know, I just thought it was normal that I would be so overcome with things and thinking, are other people experiencing things this way? You know, and since COVID, um, getting back in a car, I'm like, oh my goodness, (laughs) I really don't like other drivers. (laughs) So yes, I am with you on that one. So I always like to give an action step. So for somebody who is a highly sensitive person or a highly empathic person, what action can they take to kind of protect themselves? Good question. So one tool that I use with the clients that I work with and use myself is a, it's a mindfulness practice where you create an energetic boundary around yourself. I, I see it as a bubble. Um, And you do that in your mind, you ground yourself and you see this bubble and then you get to be in control of that bubble and what comes in and what you allow in and um, what stays out of it. You can find a version of it that I've created for my clients on Insight Timer. And I think we can link to that maybe, Danielle. Yeah, I will link in the description of this episode. Perfect. And it's just a 10 minute it's a 10 minutes. And once you know how to do it, you can do it on your own in a much shorter amount of time. So as devil's advocate to the one person who'll be listening to this and saying, I'm not going to listen to a meditation about a circle of a safe space. So what, what's a practical tip for that one person? (laughs) Yeah. Well, I think even before that, because is this awareness factor. Um, If you think that the words that I'm saying right now are connecting with you and you think, wow, hmm, that could be me or someone I know or a child of mine would be to start noticing and becoming aware of how you feel in situations and keeping a record of that to say, hmm, okay, when I drive, this happens, or when I'm around that person, this happens, or when I watch these movies, that happens and just start to become aware Great advice, Sarah Menser. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks so much for having me, Danielle. It's always a pleasure. 